Hello, welcome to Analog Output. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video about uh, envelope follower module based on the ARP 2600 circuit, and I mentioned that Eddie Bergman had done a stripboard version of pretty much the same envelope follower. And in Eddie Bergman's version, he added something to that which is some circuitry that gives you a couple more outputs. There's a gate output where the gate comes on whenever the envelope follower is actually seeing an input signal and making an envelope. And there's a trigger output which gives you a short trigger pulse at the beginning of each envelope when the gate first turns on. And so you can use these, you know, to control other modules in synchrony with this external signal that you're turning into an envelope. And I thought this is a, a useful feature. In fact, I think it's a too useful feature. That is to say, I decided it's too useful to be hardwired to the envelope follower for its input. Uh, I decided what I'd rather do is have a separate module with this gate and trigger functionality that you could plug whatever control voltage into that you wanted. So I was sort of on the verge of designing such a module and then I took a look at the uSynth website and discovered that Yi Wu Song had already designed my module for me. I didn't have to do any designing, I just had to build it. So that's what this is. This is a Cosmo format version of the uSynth comparators module. So the way it works is you've got an input here, you put a, a signal into there and whenever that signal is above some voltage threshold it turns on a gate here and when it drops below that threshold the gate turns off again. Now there's two more outputs this one here you get a short trigger pulse at the start of the gate here you get a short trigger pulse at the end of the gate. So the gate is telling you when there's a signal above threshold here, this trigger is telling you when that signal goes above threshold. This tells you when it's dropping below threshold and you set the threshold manually with this knob here. Now that's one comparator. There's a second comparator here. It's nearly the same thing. The difference is it's got a control voltage input here it goes through this attenuator here and then whatever control voltage attenuated uh, you put in there becomes the threshold for the second uh, comparator. So you can adjust the threshold manually or via some external control voltage source. And if you don't have a control voltage plugged in here, this is normal to 8 volts, so this allows you to adjust the threshold anywhere from 0 volts to 8 volts. Up here, no control voltage input. You manually adjust it anywhere from minus 8 volts to plus 8 volts. So, this is pretty much exactly what I wanted and I built it using the commercially available uSynth circuit board, which you can see I've mounted on a bracket made out of sheet aluminum. It's uh, bent over here so it is held to the front panel using the potentiometers. Using the uh, commercial circuit board, but I did make some changes. So for one thing, the uSynth design was intended for a synthesizer with a plus minus 15 volt power supply. With a plus minus 12 volt power supply it would work but the 
size of the threshold range and the amplitude of the output signals is dependent upon the voltage of the power supply. So if you ran this on 12 volts and if you built it as originally designed, you'd get a, a reduced threshold range and the output signals would be smaller than the 5 volts that they were designed to be using 15 volt power supply. So I changed the values for several resistors in order to get the output range back to the original uh, 8 volt range and to get the output gate and threshold amplitudes back to the originally designed 5 volts. While I was at it, I changed a number of other resistors. There's f four pairs of 12K resistors. Doesn't really matter exactly what value they are as long as the two in each pair are the same. I had a lot more 10K resistors than 12K resistors, so I changed them to 10K. No big deal. Another change you can see if you were to look very carefully, you probably can't see it here, but there's sort of two capacitors stuffed into a single capacitor footprint here and two there. That's just me being a little obsessive about bypass capacitors. I like to have two bypass capacitors on each op amp chip, one from the 12 volt rail and one from the minus 12 volt rail going to ground. And Usan likes to design it with a single capacitor from the plus 12 volt rail to the minus 12 volt rail. I just kludged it up to, to change that. I'm sure it really makes no perceptible difference whatsoever. Another difference is over here. The Eurorack power header. The circuit board is designed with three power header footprints on it. There's a synthesizers.com style power header footprint. There's a, an MOTM style power header footprint and there's a Eurorack style power header footprint. And when I went to assemble this thing, I was nearly done. I went to put the Eurorack power header on and I couldn't. It would not fit. The problem was that there's, you know, there's five holes in a row and then five holes in another row and the five holes in each row were the correct spacing of one tenth of an inch between them but the two rows were a little bit too far apart. So a standard box header just would not fit there. So what I ended up doing is taking a little piece of strip board and mounting the header on this piece of strip board and putting a single row of five pin header here and soldering that to the Eurorack footprint. Kind of kludgy but it works. The final change was having to do with the LEDs. These LEDs light up whenever the gate is on and the way it works is you've got a an op amp wired as a comparator in there. It puts out minus, well as originally designed, minus 15 volts when the gate is on, plus 15 volts when the gate is off and that's just connected to an LED through a series resistor to ground and when the output is minus 15 volts the LED is forward biased, it conducts, it lights up that's, that's fine, that's what you want. When the output is plus 15 volts the LED is reversed biased, it doesn't light up but it's reverse biased at a level of 15 volts. And I think that's an oversight on Yves Usan's part. If you take a look at the data sheets for most LEDs, you'll find that the absolute maximum rating for reverse voltage is usually somewhere around 5 volts or 6 volts, way below this value of 15 volts. Now that doesn't mean that if you put 15 volts across it, reverse biased, it's going to fail it just means that it's not guaranteed not to fail so and even in in my case I've got a 12 volt power supply that's a little better but it's still you know mo more than probably twice the value that the LEDs are rated for so what I did was I took 
a couple of 1N4148 switching diodes and I soldered one across each LED in an anti-parallel fashion so the cathode of the LED is attached to the anode of the switching diode and vice versa. So now when the LED is forward biased the switching diode is reverse biased and it doesn't conduct and that's fine and the LED lights up. When the LED is reverse biased the switching diode is forward biased so the switching diode conducts and then the voltage drop across the switching diode is the forward voltage of the 1N4148 which is about 700 millivolts and so the LED is still reverse biased but only at a 700 millivolt level which is absolutely fine. So having built it exactly as designed except for changing most of the resistors and changing the bypass capacitors and changing the power header and putting extra diodes on the LEDs. Other than that, exactly as defined and it works as it's supposed to work. So let's see how it works. Here's the setup I had previously with the envelope follower got a ukulele plugged in and it's controlling a VCA so when I pluck it I get but it's always the same note kind of a bore but if I take another copy of the envelope follower output plug it into the comparators take the output of that into the clock input on the sample and hold. Signal input is coming from the noise cornucopia and take the output of that into the VCO and if I turn up the attenuator now what happens is A different random note every time an envelope comes in. Now here I have the nonlinear circuits sloth chaos module and this thing puts out a control voltage that rises and falls but it does so in a kind of chaotic unpredictable fashion and if I put that into the oscillator and listen to what it produces it sounds like that now suppose I want to just get the sound when the sloth chaos is going to some of its higher voltage levels. Well, I'm going to take that same sloth chaos, put it through a multiple, and send it to the comparators. And from, the, from there we go to an envelope generator, and we're making an envelope whenever the gate turns on. So what does that sound like? Something like this. Now I've used the comparators with a control voltage input, but you could actually also use it with an audio signal input. So here's the VCO and we've got a triangle wave output on here and we've got a square wave output on here. But suppose we wanted another pulse wave output. Well we could take this triangle wave output and send it over into the comparators 
and play with the threshold. And the output is a pulse wave whose width depends on where you set the threshold. And we can even plug in a control voltage and get pulse wave modulation. So there you go, the Comparators Module from Usynth. Hope you enjoyed that. We've got still more modules coming up to talk about, so stay tuned. Subscribe button's down there. See you next time on Analog Output.